Hey guys, Steve here at Synthertech. We're launching our Synthertech VCO analog voltage controlled oscillator today. And it's a very exciting product. It's a 4HP. It's got lit sliders. It's got pulse width modulation, modulation input, one volt per octave input, square wave, triangle wave, sawtooth, and it tracks over eight octaves. And it's a very cool design. Let me show you what it looks like. If you look over here, you'll notice that we've got two of our VCOs and it goes in the same series as I've been working on here for a little while now, which is our slider series. And I'm kind of started to start calling it the micro easel design because I'm going to be making these in these 44 um, HP lunchbox cases that basically can emulate all of the functions of a Buchla music easel. And of course it can be used in other types of synthesis as well, very trackable oscillators and um, everything sounds great. Of course, you can incorporate them into other systems as well. This will be um, one of our first products that's available as a partial kit. The main brain that has the Curtis famous 3340 IC on there is gonna be on a separate board and that's gonna be surface mount assembled, uh, but the panel and um, the, the jacks and the pots and such will all be um, able to be in DIY. And of course, it'll be complete We've got another video where we're going to be showing you how to calibrate your VCO as well. So, um, like I said, it goes over about eight octaves. It sounds great, and it and it's going to be accurate for uh, beyond what you can hear reasonably. So, it's very cool. Well, let's go to the features and, and, and take a look at it. First thing I'm going to show you here is the sliders and what they do. So, the slide pot here, what they do is both in the tune, which is the coarse tuning control, and the fine tune will blink according to the, fr the frequency rate. So as you kind of get up kind of fast, they'll look solid because of course it's going faster than we can really see, but as you go into, into lower rates, they blink. Now the range of this VCO in general is about five hertz or less to about 26,000 hertz. So it's uh, quite a range. As you start getting up over about three quarters, you'll notice that you can't really hear it that much unless you're a dog or you've got an amazing ears. Um, so the workable range for the course is quite large. The fine tune here, which is also, like I said, it blinks with the, um, blinks with the, the overall oscillation, controls about a ninth. So it's about an octave and a third. So you can kind of dial that in for when you're tuning it or whatever the case. And it allows you to, um, you know, hit, 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 the, hit the frequency that you're looking for better. Okay, the next slider we have here is the modulation attenuator pot. And what that does is it just attenuates the amount of um, the signal that you put into the modulation input jack. So let's take uh, this, uh, the sawtooth out of my the, the VCR right next to it and plug that into the modulation input. And as you turn that up, your light will increase in brightness. And as you lower your frequency, once you get down into more uh, LFO or slower rates, you'll see it blink. Um, the pulse width modulation, the way this works is all, it's middle is when you have um, even symmetry, up is all the way over to the right, down is all the way over to the left, um, and that changes uh, the pulse width, of course, of your square wave output. It doesn't really affect the other outputs that much. The sine wave maybe detunes it just a little bit, but it's really more for your, uh, your your, your square wave, and that's really the function of the pulse width. Um, let's take a look at what that pulse width looks like on our oscilloscope. Um, and I kind of made that, oh, let's get it, oh, there we go. Now we're looking good. Um, let me adjust this pulse width here, and you'll kind of see. You see it goes all the way over, and then moves all the way over there. So if you want to have symmetrical, a symmetrical square wave, you kind of want to leave it they're right in the middle is where you want that. Um, of course, you can control that via CV. And that's where the, the pulse width input jack is here. And it's going to be additive to wherever you have your, um, your pot set. Um, and obviously, if you put in something in there, control voltage over the case, it'll move it up and down based upon positive or negative voltage. And if I haven't already described here, you have simultaneous triangle wave, sawtooth, 
and square wave outputs that are happening. And of course, one volt per octave here. Um, and like I said, it tracks quite far, tracks about uh, eight or more octaves. And you can plug your one volt per octave sources in there. And of course, it'll track accordingly. Okay, so there are two trim pots on the main board of the oscillator, the VCO. And one of those controls kind of the, the main lower to more audible rates, one volt per octave, and there's a high frequency tuner too, so you can get kind of that real wide range of trackability. So let's hear how this thing sounds. Let's just go through the waveforms. Of course, a lot of this is pretty basic, but having a good sounding oscillator that was used in you know some pretty famous synths is really nice to have. So let's plug this in and move around. Our, this is, of course, our sawtooth waveform. Delicious, as that is. Get down to about five hertz. Let's go into our triangle wave. Ooh. A little bit of butter there. Nice. Fine control, of course. And square wave. And let's adjust the pulse width here. So of course you can modulate that by something else. Let's put something into there. Ooh, that's crazy. So of course you can adjust that to taste. positive and negative voltage both affect that control as well as does the um the the one volt per octave input as well you can put positive and negative voltage in there if you want to start high and come back low you can do that with negative voltage and if you want to start low and go high put positive voltage in there so these are our different waveforms that's the function let's put something into the module let's, let's let's take the square wave out here and put that right up in here and let's put a modulated source in here and then show how we can attenuate that. Let's put the triangle wave here into our modulation input. All the way down, of course, you're not going to hear much modulation because it's attenuating it. Let's bring it up here. Whoa. So if you want a real subtle kind of a thing, it allows for that as well. taking it out of our um, attack release function of our ADSR. And I've got a simple patch here that I've set up that's going through our forthcoming low pass gate. And I'm just gonna go through the waveforms with random voltage into the VCO. And that's just gonna kind of give us our pitch. And we're gonna do some different patching as it goes along. You hear how it sounds like. And this is the sawtooth. Square wave. And, and we got the sine wave here. Okay, let's let's bring some modulation in here too. going into the modulation from the other VCO. Thank you. 
manually adjust the pulse with here. Anyway, thanks for checking out this demo here of our new VCO. Again, 4 HP, a lot of power and a small, small module, and blinky sliders makes this a great choice. Thanks a lot. This is assembled in the USA here in Moscow, Idaho. Thanks for checking it out. Somebody, bright and bubbly, terrible thing, who was doing her thing on your chest. No.